Hey everybody, it is Pika over here in Singapore. This is your night owl for Thursday, July 27th. Man, August is around the corner. What happened? I remember thinking it was just June and now it's August. Anyway, I am finally back home in a place where I can rest, relax for the rest of the night. I'm trying really hard not to pick up my, you know, <laughs> my, my laptop and start working on something else, but I'm running on fumes today. I think I slept for like three hours. I was up until 2.30, um, catching up with people from around the world. Um, I love the people I talk to. Um, I have a really good friend out in Canada. What up, Vanessa? And I have another good friend out in China, so I get to catch up with Mia every so often. Um, hoping to add more people to the list, but, you know, no one's contacted me yet. Hint, hint. Anyway, um, I was up late um, talking to people, catching up with my own stuff, trying to, you know, wrap my brain around how I want to do things, what I want to do next. And, yeah, time ran away from me. And then I went to sleep. Alarm rang like three seconds later, and it happened to be 5.30 in the morning, and I had to get ready for my Periscope. So, I don't know how many of you joined me for my Periscope this morning. I was on the Crown for Success channel. It's actually called Crown for Queen um, under Periscope. And I come on Wednesdays. Usually it's 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I did 7 p.m. Eastern Time once, and I'm not sure if, you know, if I liked the timing or not. Um, but I kind of feel like 6 p.m. is a little bit easier for me and maybe for you as well. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I did that this morning and thought maybe if I did it early enough and finish it up, maybe I'd go back to sleep. But yeah, that didn't happen either. So I ended up working out and um, got ready for the day. I actually had to go back to the, the primary school and register, like complete the registration because I told you there was a hiccup yesterday. Um, to do with my divorce so got that sorted out this morning went to work and <clears throat> I'm not sure if I mentioned this before I'm a curriculum planner but for kindergarten age groups so I do science I was doing drama for a little bit but I think that's been taken off my plate so I'm grateful I have a little more time to um, focus on the science itself um, it's actually really interesting I really like the concept of putting together, you know, lesson plans for children, mostly because I was a homeschool mom for a really long time. Yeah, I worked hospitality, and yeah, it was just shift work, but to be quite frank, kids don't need eight hours of school a day. They need to play all day long, but the amount of retention that they have when you do teach them is actually quite incredible. You could sit there and teach them. I, I, I took 20 minutes a day every time I, um, before I went to work or after, depending on what shift it was, and I would take 20 minutes a day and I would sit my baby girl down and we would go over reading and we would read one passage and sound out words and work on vowel sounds and consonant sounds and stuff like that, introducing new sounds every so often. And with 20 minutes a day, and I'm serious, it's just 20 minutes a day. This girl retained everything and you would find her like trying to sound out stuff as she was playing and stuff like that. So it was really like amazing. So I liked the idea of being a homeschool mom because it fit into my idea of how kids should be raised. Um, I was raised by my grandparents. I'm actually really, really lucky to be able to say that because that kind of knowledge you don't get just get anywhere. You need the the what is it, the elders of your family to be around. So you can you know, have knowledge passed down to you and stuff. You, you don't just read that in a book. It's different when your, your grandparents say, you know what, in my day this happened, and this is the way we did things. And you get to pick their brain a little bit. It's, it's pretty deep and very touching to me. So from my perspective, I felt like she should be home. I didn't want to go pawn her off on some random person in a daycare somewhere and have her basically go to work while I went to work as well. Um, I didn't like that concept at all. Um, from the time she was born till this April, she's been with me. She has not been out of my sight. There are a couple times where I did have to put her in daycare for a little bit, but that didn't last very long, mostly because I have separation anxiety. <laughs> um, and the other thing is I didn't feel like it was really serving her. So yeah, it, it kind of just worked out that way. So what I found out was, Having a maid here in um, 
in Singapore is like the norm, right? So you have a household, you have someone who lives in the house with you, who cooks and cleans and takes care of the kids or the elderly, whatever the case may be, and that is their whole job. They don't get paid very much, but I mean, considering the price of education here in Singapore, it was the smarter choice for me because then I don't have to rush and go pick her up. I don't have to rush and do this or that or anything else. There's someone at home taking care of that for me. As with all things, um, people are people. They have their own interests and their own wants at, you know, in mind, so they do what they feel is right, and whether that hurts you or not, they're usually not all that worried about it. So tonight I kind of want to talk to you about managing expectations. I think it's a consistent thing that needs to be handled, and it's not just, you know, from the top down, like, per se, in, in management, but it's like you need to manage it from the bottom up as well. It's, it's something that I think would eliminate a lot of problems between people. If my manager were to come to me and tell me exactly what she wants and how she wants it, but it's also open to a discussion so I can make sure I clarify and I can maybe give her some of my input and then we come to a consensus and then work from there, that would be the ideal work relationship, in my opinion. Okay. Um, in the reverse, I think it would be very, very helpful and beneficial to a company if the employees were to manage the manager's expectations of their work, meaning to say that if I have a project going on, I touch base every so often and I tell my manager, this is what's going on, this is where I'm at, um, just so you know. Because if I manage her expectations, then anything that comes in from outside, like if um, a parent calls in and is upset about classwork, if a principal is upset about the lesson plan, I mean, any, any one of a million different problems, if anyone comes in, my manager already has a heads up because I informed her and I'm managing the expectation. So I feel like that's smart in everybody's you know situation. But I don't think people really do that. I don't think people think that far ahead. I don't think it's like the old school mentality is to serve, to serve well, to give quality service. And right now it's just like, okay, service is that thing. And the only reason I'm afraid of you is because you might tell the whole world on social media that, you know, my company isn't all that great. So I kind of wish that it wasn't that way, but I'm not sure how to change it yet. I'm working on that. Um, yeah, so managing expectations. Having the maid was great, and I treated her like family. It was like the sister I never had, and I liked having another adult in the house, uh, especially after my grandparents passed away. Uh, my mom moved out. My brother, you know, decided to go to Sydney and relocate over there. So I was up in the house by myself with the maid um, and my daughter. And come to find out she was, because there were less people in the house, less people watching, she was doing things that weren't very responsible of her. So unfortunately I had to let her go. But in that instance, as, she, for lack of a better word, her manager, her employer, um, I did manage my expectations of her, but whether she listened to me or not was a different situation. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it was, it was kind of a weird day and I've been thinking about this managing expectations thing all day, I'm not sure why. Um, I think maybe because the contractor has been giving us a little bit of a problem. Um, we're not sure whether it's the supplier of all the cabinets or if it's the contractor itself, but we have a hiccup. The hood that we thought we bought, we did not. It was not in the purchase order and it was not in the receipt and it's not in the kitchen at the moment. So we had to figure out what happened. And then on top of that, the people who were supposed to come in and set the countertops, from what we understood, it would take like a day. But now it's looking like they have to come in and measure on Monday and then they have to go back and cut it. And then by Friday of next week, maybe we'll get the kitchen back. So what was looking like a week's worth of work is now looking like two. So I'm a little annoyed, to say the least, that this is the way it's been happening. But I mean, I can't really do anything about it. I can be annoyed, but it's not going to serve me any good either. So I've got to get over it and see what happens next. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> 
Back to managing expectations. I really think it's one of those concepts that's really undersold. No one really talks about it. I feel like work would be better if it worked both ways. As in, like, I manage her expectations, she manages my expectations. I feel like customers and retailers would have a better relationship if the retailer really manages the customer's expectation of the product and the customers are able to clearly define what it is they're looking for so that they can be matched up with the right product, so to speak. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's just been on my mind a lot, managing expectations. Yeah, anyway, really random today. Um, I hope you all had a great day. It's Thursday over here. I know it's Wednesday night. Or when, no, sorry, Thursday morning for y'all right now. It's Thursday night over here. Um, I'm curious, though. What are y'all doing over the weekend? Are y'all working? Are y'all relaxing? Are you going out to party? I'm just curious because I kind of, since I don't have a maid and I don't have anyone really helping me out, I've given up that life. I've given up going out and doing stuff. And for the most part, even when I did go out, it wasn't like I was out to go drinking or anything. I really love music. I really love to dance. But I'm kind of picky about if I dance or not, and it's got to be the right, I don't know, the right feeling or whatever. But more than that, I love networking. And in that atmosphere, everyone is relaxed anyway. So I like being out in a group of people, talking to people, getting to know people. So I'm just curious, what is it you do on the weekend? And is it business oriented or is it just to relax? Are you trying to just get away from everything business on the weekends? Or are you trying to, you know, catch up with the things you want to do rather than things you're doing for someone else. Because honestly, if you have a job, you're actually building someone else's dream. You're not building yours. And while I need my job because I need a steady income while I put my stuff together, I'm making sure that I put in the work from my job, you know, my work on, on the side. So I'm just curious. Uh, leave me a comment. Um, hit me up on the DM if you'd like. Um, and, and let's have a conversation about that. I'm, I'm just curious. Is this something that you think is easy to to plan out? Like, time is one of those things you can't get back. Like, once you think about stuff for 10 minutes, you could have been doing something instead. And I feel like a lot of times <laughs> I sit and look at Pinterest and, like, exercise routines and don't actually work out when I could be. So I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to make better use of my time. And I'm just curious. Weekends are usually... Back in college, it was like a break from everything else, right? But as adults, we change what that means. Um, before I was building my business, weekends meant that I would clean and catch up with housework. So just curious, what do weekends mean for you? Um, I'm just going to leave it at that, y'all. I am exhausted. I don't know if I made any sense today, but let me know what you think about managing expectations. And of course, like, leave me comments about the weekend. I'm just, I'm just really curious to see how y'all spend your time. So... With that being said, y'all have a great Thursday. I'm going to call it a night, and um, I'll be back here tomorrow. All right? Take care. Bye.